We seem to be talking about different geographical slopes on this. The curve would be changing. And yet you just said that 20% numbers coming out of New York gives an indication that we don't quite know when the seeds, to use your, your metaphor, were planted. So how confident are you on the start dates of each curve for each of the geographical er areas that the president seems to be indicating we'll be adjusting the policy for? So that's a very good question. So what we do know is now we can backtrack from people who get very seriously ill to when they probably got infected versus when they were exposed. And so when you start backing out each of those pieces, when you start seeing hospitalized patients, you know that the virus has probably been there for three to four weeks substantially circulating within the population. So that's what we're looking for. Now, as all of our testing is improved and we want to really applaud the group who has worked on it. You know, if you look at the pandemic flu preparedness, all of this was built on a flu platform. It was never ever thought that you'd have a simultaneous respiratory disease hitting at exactly the same time as your flu hits in the country. And so when you're doing all of your flu surveillance, you could have small cases of these pneumonias and flu-like illnesses characterized as a flu-like illness for the last four to six weeks. And so that's really a caution to all of us. And so when we get through all of this, we'll be looking at each of the pandemic preparedness plans. A long way of saying we know Washington State is a little bit ahead of New York because of the hospitalization records. What we will get to as a country with the non testing that will be available is being able to do what the president talked about simultaneously, simultaneously doing containment contract tracing at the same time you're doing mitigation. And I think right now we put everything into mitigation, yet if we geographically get specific data by zip codes and counties, we'll be able to approach this in a very laser focused way making sure that what we're doing in each of those areas is absolutely appropriate for where they are in their own little bell-shaped curve. Dr. Dr. Birch, uh, Dr. Birch, um, when will the government roll out the antibody tests so people can know possibly if they've been exposed? So all uh, several of them have come to the FDA, um, I believe. Um, obviously, that's something I am very interested in for two reasons. One, um, it will give us a retrospective on where these infections were, who was actually infected, and how really asymptomatic versus mild versus all of that comes into the spectrum. Secondly, by people who have high titers of those antibodies, those can become our solution with plasmapheresis for those in need and the, and the making of hyperimmune globulin. So knowing who they are becomes really critical. But I think we're still a couple of weeks out. I have to go back and talk to the FDA where each of these are, because this is what saved us with when you do flu swabs, when you do threat, strep throat swabs, and now where you do an HIV test. So these are the kinds of tests that we know will be critical in the future. I wanted to say one other thing, because you see a lot of numbers out there about 70% of the population is going to get infected or 60% of the population based on those models. Understand that the way you get to that number is you do nothing and it goes through three cycles. So they're talking about this cycle that we're currently in, another cycle in 2021, and a third cycle in 2122 in order to get that level of population infected. And you know we will have vaccines most likely by the 2122 season. And we're going to hopefully have therapeutics in the fall of the next season. So the reason we're so much focused on blunting the curve for this piece is if, if the virus comes back, we'll have much more facility both for diagnosis, testing, monoclonal antibodies, treatments, and then the vaccine. Mm -hmm. Dr. Burks, uh, a question about...